Tim Montgomery had one goal in life, to be the fastest man in the world. And he was willing to do whatever it took to get there. Actually, I would have sold my soul to the devil. In his hometown of Gaffney, South Carolina, Tim grew a reputation as the fastest kid in town. In his mind, it was an answer to prayer. Because I asked God for it. I asked God to make me fast. As a rising track star, Tim was proud when he lettered in track as an eighth grader. But by high school, that wasn't enough. And when I saw myself on the front page, that changed everything for me. It wasn't nothing about the Letterman jacket no more. It was all about making front page. Then in college, he set the world's junior record in the 100 meter with a 9.96. I had Adidas calling me, I had Nike calling me, I had Aces calling me, I had everyone calling. Tim later lost that title on a technicality. The track was three centimeters short. He was upset at first, but there were plenty of agents ready to capitalize on his celebrity. He signed a $250,000 contract with ASICS to race overseas. He was living the high life. A satisfaction was being able to, to wake up and, and go buy what you want to buy. But it was over. Then you look at it and you be like, I got to find the next race because I just bought this $15,000 watch. Tim was competing at the highest level and paid well to do it. He earned a gold medal in 2000 as a member of the 4x100 relay team, but he wanted more. I wanted to be great. I wanted to be known as the greatest ever. To him, that meant earning the title of fastest man in the world. At the time, it belonged to teammate Maury Screen, and Tim would do anything to take it from him, even if he had to cheat to win. I lost sight. If I'm ready to sell my soul to the devil to win, why not take something to win? That something was steroids. The only thing holding him back was fear of getting caught. Then he met Victor Conti, who claimed to have drugs that were undetectable. So desperate, Tim convinced himself it was a divine appointment. The first thing I said, got to be from God. How is this? How do I run into a guy that has something that's, that can beat the testers? And no conscience. I just said that everyone is doing it. I said, I got the undetectable. I've been blessed by God, and here we go. Away they go, great start there from Dwayne Chambers, was it? Was it Tim Montgomery? Chambers trying to come back at him, but he's not going to get there. Montgomery's going to take this one. Montgomery wins it by Kyle Meechon going away. And the time, 9.78 have confirmed as a world record. In 2002, Tim achieved his goal. He became the fastest man in the world. I just hear this crowd just roaring, roaring. I look back and this clock say 978. But his victory was short-lived. And everything went black. When Victor Conti had been arrested and Tim was implicated, along with former track star Marion Jones, he was served a subpoena to go before a grand jury. I told myself, I said, uh, what do they have? I've never tested positive. What do they have? They had lab samples from both Tim and Marion. It was enough. The US Anti-Doping Agency suspended Tim from competition for four years and stripped all records and awards from 2001, including his coveted title. Tim said he turned to the one thing he thought could repeal the decision. I got money, bought the best lawyers. I said, you know what? I ain't gonna go to God on this one. I'm gonna go to money. But the appeal dragged on for years and he was out of money. He got involved in a counterfeit check ring and even began dealing heroin. In 2008, he was arrested and sitting in jail. I just told myself life is over. I was gonna get to prison, trying to find a way to die. Locked up in the Portsmouth, Virginia jail, Tim said he had no hope until he began to talk to God. I said, God, I ask for forgiveness. I said, I know I came to you a lot of times. I know I lied to you a lot of times. But on this day right here, Lord, 
I pray that you forgive me. Tim recommitted his life to Jesus Christ. As he read his Bible and prayed, he said his outlook began to change because he let God work in his life. He also began to experience it. It's a feeling that's kind of like changes things inside of you. It's way beyond the feeling I feel when I cross the finish line with my hands up. It's way, it's, it's way beyond the feeling that I feel when I'm on the podium and I'm singing the Star Spangled Banner. It's way beyond that. It's a feeling of, I can rest now. Tim served four and a half years in prison. And today he's married to Jamma Lee, raising a family and training young people in track and field. So I came back out here and I said, I gotta go see the track. And when I came out to the track, and it didn't make me feel like I used to feel, I said, thank you, God. I said, thank you, God. The only person who wipe a taste out your mouth, a lust, a wanting to win, a have things, is God.